Hey there! Using background tracks can be a lot of fun. It can also add a whole other dimension to your practice and help you work on things like improvisation and timing. I'm going to show you how to find backing tracks for you to practice along with and some options to create your own. Let's do it! Hi, I'm Thomas Michaud from Real Guitar Success. Now, there are two main ways you might want to use backing tracks. One is to practice chord changes, and you can often find backing tracks that are for a song that you recognize and play along with it. This helps you both to learn the song, but also helps you to get clear on the timing of the song and when to change chords. It's natural when you're practicing on your own to kind of slow down and speed up to change chords, which gets to be a habit after a while and can be a problem. The other way to use backing tracks is sort of like as a band to improvise with. In other words, to play guitar solos. I think that's a lot of fun. And it's a great option to practice your improvisation chops. Even just practicing simple scales over chord changes helps you to start hearing how the scale fits with those type of songs or chord changes. What's really cool there is if you can find backing tracks that also suggest what scales might fit over those chord changes. That gives you a little extra boost. But I wouldn't be afraid to experiment either and try out different things. Now, I just want to mention, backing tracks are a great addition to your practice routine. But just like playing with a band, it's not the same as practicing in a methodical way, including scales and exercises and other things that you need to work on slowly and consciously. For that reason, I don't recommend using backing tracks for either all or maybe even most of your practicing. Now, there are basically three different ways to get backing tracks. The first way to get backing tracks to practice along with is to search for free versions. Now, one option there is to look on the World Wide Web, Google. <laughs> At least that's what most people use nowadays, Google. So you'll want to type in the search box, free backing tracks, or you might want to try to narrow it down, free rock backing tracks or free backing tracks, acoustic guitar, that kind of thing. You may find individual backing tracks that way, but a bigger option is to look for websites that offer free backing tracks. One such website is called guitarbackingtrack.com, and I'll put a link to that below. I haven't done a lot of searching myself, but I suspect there's quite a few more if you're willing to do the work. Another great option is actually YouTube. YouTube is actually one of the biggest search engines, second only to Google itself, and YouTube's owned by Google. Now, a lot of the YouTube videos will show up in a Google search, but I found I have much more control over searching directly in YouTube. One of the keys is what I call the art of searching. Learn how to search in a way that gets better results. I'm going to give you an example of how I would go about searching for backing tracks on YouTube. Now, you can apply all these same ideas to searching either on the web or other sources like SoundCloud, which is another one I use. So, we're going to start out with going in the search of YouTube, typing in something very basic. I'll put in, I pasted in backing tracks. Now, you'll notice right away you get a list of other possibilities using the terms backing tracks that might be just what you're looking for. So, to start off with, we're going to just choose backing tracks, but you might want to start with one of the other ones. And when I return, I get, wow, a lot of backing tracks. And fortunately, most of them are around guitar. That must be a popular thing. Now, I'm going to refine that a little bit. Let's try backing tracks acoustic. I want something more suited for acoustic guitar. And sure as heck, I get a bunch of possibilities with an acoustic guitar in the title and, of course, the pictures too. Now, most of these still are what I would call jam tracks, tracks with chord progressions that you could practice along with, but not necessarily particular songs. Let's try. We'll add, instead of acoustic, let's try a band that I like, Style of Eagles. And of course, you can put any band. Style of Eagles brings me to a bunch of selections of songs or at least things in the style of Eagle. Some are songs. Now, I see as we go along, many are backing tracks for songs. That's cool. And what's neat is they have, this has a suggestion of what scale to play along with this and even the tempo, how fast or slow it is. We got 106 beats per minute. Well, let's see. Let's say you're looking for a particular song. Let's try that. Instead of backing track style, let's put, I'll put a song. Peaceful, easy feeling. How about that? Eagle song just came to mind since we're looking at eagles. And sure as heck, 
there's a whole bunch of backing tracks for Peaceful Easy Feeling. Of course, you'd have to check them out and see which ones are more like what you're looking for. Look at a, a bluegrass backing track for Peaceful Easy Feeling. That's cool. I'll bet you there's a bunch of stuff in there. I could be here all day. Anyway, try to have fun with it and try different things to see what you come up with. Over time, you'll collect these backing tracks and have a bunch of things you can use. Another great source is SoundCloud.com. Now, this is a source that allows independent artists to put their songs on the website, and they can charge for them, but a lot of them are free. It so happens that I put a lot of backing tracks on SoundCloud. You'll find the same techniques that you used for YouTube work on SoundCloud. Depending on how you search, you can narrow it down so you don't have to look through and listen to hundreds of songs. While free backing tracks can work fine, if you want a higher quality and you want to save time with searching, you'll probably want to go to a website that you can purchase backing tracks. One such website is karaoke-version.com. Then you'll want to search specifically for guitar backing tracks. They have backing tracks for all instruments and they'll remove either the vocals or melody instruments or sometimes the chords. If you want to try going directly there, I often find for myself that even though I'd love to get something for free, that paying a little bit extra to get something that really works for what I'm doing, it's well worth it in the long run. Let me know in the comments if you know some good places to search for either backing tracks that are free or ones that you can purchase. Another way to get backing tracks, and my personal favorite, is to make your own backing tracks. And there are a lot of ways to do that. One way is to use a free program called Audacity. You can find a song that you want to play and sing along with, put it into Audacity, and then with a little tweaking, remove the vocal. You can also try removing the lead guitar if you want to try improvising with the song, though it removes vocals better than it seems to remove lead guitar. I'll put a link below so you can get that software. I'm going to show you an example of how I go about removing the vocal part using Audacity. Okay, here we have the audio that I've put into the Audacity dashboard and I'm going to select a portion of the audio to work on. In this case, I'll go from here to here. I know there's uh, vocals in this part and let's play it and see what it sounds like. We are living in the moment And here we are dreaming in the open Okay, we've got a nice male vocal. Now to remove that vocal, Audacity makes it really easy. We're going to go to the effects, down to vocal remover. Now you have several options here, remove vocals, and you have a few options here, remove frequency band or retain. I find the best result for me just comes from simple entire spectrum. And usually I leave this where it's set. I did a little tweaking and I'm not sure if I left it exactly, but it, this works fine, 200 to 8,000. Now we're going to preview and see what it sounds like without the vocals. Not bad. And to save that, you go to OK. And now it's changed that part to be the instrumental with pretty much, I hear just a hair of the vocals left over. You can also make backing tracks using GarageBand or another DAW that stands for Digital Audio Workstation. Such workstations include Sonar, Cubase, Logic Pro, and many others. This could be fairly involved or fairly simple depending on how complicated of a backing track you want and your skill level with music in general. I'm going to put a link to a wonderful lesson that another YouTuber made on the whole process and how he goes about making a backing track. I think you'll enjoy it. That said, because it takes a lot of time to actually create it within my... I use Sonar as a DAW. I do sometimes create backing tracks that way. More often, because I'm a bit lazy and time is an issue, I use a program called Band in a Box, or abbreviated to B-I-A-B, which is a common abbreviation. This is an incredible program that allows me to choose a style, put in the chords, and choose the key, even change keys if I'm not happy with that key, and then I can play the whole thing back and it'll add the bass, drums, other instruments. I can change different instruments if I want. It's great. And they have several versions, ranging some fairly affordable to really high-end ones.
Within Band in the Box, there's two ways to go about making a backing track. You can just make it from scratch. Basically, you find the chord changes that you want, you put them into the measures in Band in the Box, choose a style, a tempo, the key, all that, and then you play it back and when you're happy, download it into a file. Another way to do that is to find a MIDI track online and upload it into Band in the Box. Then it puts in all the chord changes and suggests the instruments. I'm going to make a video to demonstrate how I use Band in the Box using the by scratch method, which is how I usually go about it. And I'll put a link when I do so you can watch how that works. Or you could just go out and buy Band in the Box and start experimenting. There are plenty of tutorial videos on YouTube so you can get going. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me today. If you got something out of this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. Have you found some ways to get backing tracks that I didn't mention? I'd love to know about it. Let us know in the comments below so we can all share in. And I'd love to hear from you too if you found either making your own or using Band in the Box has been a lot of fun. Let us know. I'll see you again in another video, hopefully soon. Bye.